Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee. I'm a professional band instrument repair technician. I started a YouTube channel to document what my life is like in the trades. I appreciate you stopping by today. Today is April the 29th. Today's episode is an emergency repair that I had to do when I got off the road last night. I had two hours to patch this hole. Beautiful vintage Wilson euphonium. The problem was the mouth pipe had a little bit of rot on it, a little bit of red rot, and the client took it to a repair shop and they soaked it in an ultrasonic cleaner and ultrasonic cleaners do what ultrasonic cleaners do and it blows out red rot. So if you're using an ultrasonic cleaner, you always have to be careful because it'll do damage to plating, it'll do damage to lacquer, it will blow out pinholes. If there's any kind of rot on the instrument, you have to be very aware of what's going on. Now, apparently the shop also did not play test the instrument because they would have known. But that's not for us to judge anybody. We have to get this repair done. Now, there were a couple of things that were hitches in my get along about getting this repair done. There was a dent in the mouth pipe and I had to overcome that. They make, Fariz makes a special tool, a cabling system so you can get dents out of the mouth pipe. Well, in my move, I've misplaced mine and I can't find it. Disassemble a tool and make a tool before we could start the repair. So we got the repair done and it turned out great. And at about this time, the client is on stage playing with the instrument and it's doing great. It turned out beautifully. So that's today's video. Well, let's just jump on in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own N56 mouth pipe cable tool in the free style. I'm going to use a tap handle that I made following along from Matthew Slauson. Check out his channel. The principle of what I'm going to be doing is the way that a drum stand is put together. It has a plastic insert that a wing nut tightens down on to hold each section in place. So this is what I am turning here. And just like that, we have our first part of the tool. Now on to the next. Here it is inserted in the tap handle. It's going to work out just fine. Now here's my P50 dent ball driver. I had to strip the cable out of it to have a length that's long enough. Then I'll insert that cable through the plastic in the tap handle. Now I can adjust it where I want it to go and I can cinch it down to be able to yank on it. So there's my homemade N56. Now it's time to start the actual repair. I'm going to get the piston, spring, and bottom cap removed. And now I'm going to carefully thread through the cable tool. Have it come out the inside knuckle in the first valve casing. I'm going to use an ABS push rod to kind of help me move it through and out the casing, being very careful not to disturb the insides of the casing. Now I can thread on my dent balls and get after this repair. You always have to be careful when you're working and drawing through the inside of a valve casing. It's easy to put burrs or do some other kind of damage, so you always take extreme caution. I always want to be able to see in the casing as much as I can. I don't want just to blindly pull anything. Got it. Now I'm going to take a magnet and I can tell exactly where the ball is. It sits right on top. I can see I've got it directly under my dent, which is perfect. Now I'm going to choke up on my tap handle puller and give it a little bit of a yank. Boom. Did you see it move? 
and now I'm going to tap it. And from here, it's just like every other repair. Hollow tap, dent ball tap, tap it around. Now, the other thing about this is that you use an old style tapping method so that I'm actually chasing the dent out, which is pushing the dent ball into the larger diameter tubing, which then frees the dent ball. I can work that out and then add the next size and go again. Once I've got the dent removed, then I very carefully feed the steel cable back out. It drops free. I can get my dent ball off. And then I'll very carefully pull the cable through. Insert the piston, check it, good to go. Little finish tapping to make things look nice. Here we have our dent is out, looks good. Now let's address that hole, get a patch done. For quick things, I like to use the J17 brass patches. We'll get the burrs knocked off of this, and then we'll buff it. And I like to use the R44 yellow buffing compound. Looks really nice. Using the F97 duckbill pliers, I'll just make my shape, bend it around, conform it, and make this look really good and get it ready to solder in. For soldering, I'll use the J61 low temp silver solder. Always does a very nice job on silver. Neutralize that flux. Cleaned up all this heat varnish that was around the patch. And now I'm gonna get this plated to blend. And while I'm getting set up to do plating, I look at these water key corks and I'm just really disappointed in them. So I changed them and I use the A34 tapered water key corks. I don't like these little stick in style. They, I don't know if they're new or not, but they don't look good. And I know that the end result of our making this patch, it's still a patch. And in the long term, the player is going to have to have a mouth pipe. She knows that. But this emergency situation will get her by. So it turned out really nice, as you can see here. The plating matched very well. <laughs> 